these Moktaras and Arandas will uh, slowly acclimatize over a couple of winters. Eh? So we, we were a little bit late in the middle of winter, but um, hopefully going into summer, uh, they won't burn so much, but um, we'll have to see. By next winter, if they're still burning, we're going to move them again. So yeah, it's just trying to acclimatize these types of ones. Um, as you'll notice some of the dendrobiums too, people put them out in balambalas mm -hmm. and they do do well. You know, that's just them acclimatizing to the full sun. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically we're just going to have a mini workshop. Um, so what we usually do with our workshops is we cover orchids, anthuriums, um, bromeliads, gasmanias, gingers and heliconias. But uh, today we're just focusing mainly on orchids. Okay, so I'll, I'll go through all the different types of orchids that we grow here in Fiji, the main types that people are growing, um, cut flowers, potted plants, and then I'll teach the, um, everyone, you know, what different orchids, what, what uh, they require, and, um, and then I'll touch a little bit on anthuriums and gasmanias, just for those who have them in their gardens. Yeah, go through fertilizing, insecticides, fungicides, things like that. Welcome back to our horticulture series. If you've missed out on part one of the Orchid Growers Forum, you can catch up via our YouTube channel. But tonight we're learning more about orchid fertilizers, insecticides and fungicides. Stay tuned. Orchids, fertilizing is a very big part. Um, if you want your orchids to grow healthy and to get the best out of your plants, okay? More flowers, you know, healthy green growth. Now, I've shown you what we've planted our orchids in, okay? Our media. Now, basically, that media there is just for support. If you have your other plants growing in soil, at least within soil, you have your nutrients in the soil. Here you don't have any nutrients at all, okay? It's just grown in gravel, there's no nutrients at all, it can't get any nutrients from anywhere. So it does try and pull things from the atmosphere when, when you're watering it, it takes in certain nutrients, but to give it what it really wants, you have to fertilize it. Okay, and no large scale orchid farm really uses organic fertilizers. You can use it, but you have you have risks that you'll take when you use organic fertilizers. Huh? So what I'm going to talk to you about today is some of the fertilizer that we, we use here at uh, South Sea Orchids. All right, now on the f there are two main types of fertilizer that you're going to fertilize your plants with. One is a follow fertilizer, which you dilute in water, and one is a slow release fertilizer, a pellet, which you will put onto your pots of your plant. Okay, so I'm going to cover with two fertilizers. One is a foliar fertilizer, one powder, which you're going to dilute in uh, water to supply to your plants. And another fertilizer is a slow release fertilizer, which we have in pellets that we're going to put onto our pot plant. All right? So I'll cover the foliar fertilizer first. Now, previously, if you would have uh, bought from us before or if you've been to our previous workshops, we used to have two different fall of fertilizers which you would alternate and it gives you different things okay one was for growing one was for flower boosting okay we don't bring that in anymore so now what we have is a is sort of in between where it supplies both okay it's called folly fur all right we get it from agchem and we do sell it here um, now this folly fur we use twice a week here at the farm okay so we dilute this powder at a ratio of one, uh, one teaspoon to four liters. All right, now this supplies all of its, most of its nutrients and micronutrients, okay? That's why we give it the fall of fertilizer. And we'll supply it twice a week. And anything to do with fertilizing, it's with orchids, it's all consistency, okay? So you, you'll, you'll try your best to get a consistent supply of fertilizer to your plants. Okay, so we have a strict routine here at South Sea Orchids. We supply our plants fertilizer with a fall of fertilizer uh, every Monday. 
and every Thursday. Every Monday and Thursday are our fertilizing days. Okay, and what we'll do is we'll go out and water our plants first early in the morning, and then we'll supply our fuller fertilizer after that. All right? And again, you're going to be supplying your plant right from the leaves, stems, and the roots. Okay, you, you apply the fertilizer to the whole plant. Okay, now, we here, we have a large area to cover, so we have a large knapsack, and we use that ratio, okay, one teaspoon to four liters. We use a knapsack. If you don't have that many plants, you know, you can use that same ratio and put it into a spray bottle like this, okay? Um, it can, if, you, if you're not going to use the whole lot, you can leave that on the side. We've left ours for up to two weeks, it's fine, okay? So you can leave that for up to two weeks. Even if you have extra, you can use them on other plants as well. A lot of you may have already bought some orchid fertilizer, okay? There's out there, there are some out there, but then you just have to look at pricing of things. Okay, so we, we use this $18 a kilo. Um, I think this one is maybe $18 for half a kilo. Okay, and it talks about specific things. It's got different nutrients. Then you have your slow-release fertilizer, okay? Now, these usually come in pellets. Okay, sometimes you have gray pellets, some you see yellow pellets, and uh, sometimes it's granular like this, this red one. Okay, so some of the products we have out there, are, one is Nutricoat, that is one slow release fertilizer. One is Nutricoat, another one is Osmocoat. Nutricoat, Osmocoat, and this one here is called Slowy. Slowy. All right, now, basically what you want is just the uh, NPK ratio, if it's a slow release fertilizer, you want an NPK ratio of around 14, 14, 14, okay? 14, 14, 14 is, the, is something that you want to look for for the slow release fertilizer. Okay, now, and when you are s applying the slow release fertilizer to your plants, to your pot, you're going to apply it around the edge of the pot, okay? You're not going to put you're going to apply the slow release fertilizer around the edge of the pot. Okay, you're not going to apply it straight onto the canes because then you have chances of that cane of the plant burning. All right? So you apply it to the edge of the pot and anyway, when an orchid plant grows, it sends its roots to the edge of the pot anyway. So you are getting the nutrients to the roots around the edge. All right? Now, usually these slow release fertilizers, they will tell you how often to apply. Um, usually it's around six months to one year, okay? Um, if you apply it during the summer, you might want to reapply again in the winter, okay? Because we have very heavy downpours and it gets rid of all of that nutrient. Okay, with those pellets, those gray pellets, those yellow pellets, a lot of the time people get confused. They see the pellets there for years and years and they say, oh, we don't have to reapply. So no, th those pellets is just a shell and it just releases the nutrients over time, but the, sh the plastic shell stays there. Okay, so if you notice that there's still plastic shells there after a year, you still have to apply your slow release fertilizer. Okay, it's just the empty shell that's sitting there, no nutrients left inside. Not to use your slow release fertilizer on things like vanders, which these vanders is basically you won't have heaps of roots down into a media. Okay, they have a lot of aerial roots, so we advise you to use mainly your foliar fertilizer on things like this. And even your dendrobes, things that are on balambalas that are hanging, use your foliar fertilizer and not your slow release fertilizer. So, really, you will only use your slow release fertilizer on your plants that are in pots. Okay, fertilizing your anthuriums and your gasmanias. Now, we don't really spend any time worrying about the Gasmania fertilizing them. They do well on their own, okay? Um, if anything, uh, put a bit of manure with, with the media, okay, with the rice husk. They're, they'll do fine on their own. Um, apart from the plant hormone, you can put into the bromeliads. We don't spend much effort with the bromeliads. They just do their own thing. Okay, the rule with the orchids is, because they are uh, fertilizer sensitive, you would rather give smaller dosage, more frequent, than giving them high dosages, uh, less frequent. 
Okay, so you, so you do it the other way around. You, you do low dosage and you do it more often. Okay? So that's, that's the rule with orchids and fertilizing. Coming up next, pesticides and insecticides. Um, going through and picking dead leaves. Okay, simple things like this can stop pests and diseases coming into your nursery. Very important about insecticides and fungicides, we don't really want to use insecticides and fungicides. Okay, it's very costly, it's not good for the environment, and you can stop this if there's a couple of rules, you just, and basically you just want to keep your nursery clean. Okay, hygiene is the main thing. Okay, going through cutting back old dead canes, um, going through and picking dead leaves. Okay, simple things like this can stop pests and diseases coming into your nursery. Okay, very, very simple. Basically, that's all they come in there for. They have a diseased plant, they have, they, it's a weakened plant, they will come and attack it. Okay, so you can stay away from insecticides and fungicides if you have a clean nursery. Alright, now, before I go into the different types of insecticides and fungicides we'll use, it's a good idea to identify the types of insects and fungus that attack your plants. Okay, and I'm just going to go through a couple of things that we have had in the past, um, pests and diseases that attack our plants. Okay? Okay, one of the main, the main ones that we'll have and that, um, that spreads very fast is uh, Dendrobium borer. Okay? A cane weevil, Dendrobium borer, native here. Now, what this insect does is it burrows into the bottom of the cane. Uh, you can actually see the hole sometimes and it lays its eggs in there. And then the grubs eventually eat their way up the cane and kill the plant, sometimes kill the whole plant. Alright, so you can notice that sometimes they're eating halfway up and the top is heavy and it falls over. And you can feel the bottom is all soft and eaten and the top is still hard. Okay, this is a good indication you got Dendrobium borer. Now, the thing to use here is we will only resort to maybe orthene if we feel that it's a very bad insect, okay? Orthene. Now, just before I start with the orthene, I uh, just want to mention there are two different types of insecticides, okay? One is a systemic insecticide and one is a contact insecticide, all right? Systemic meaning when you spray the plant, it's actually taken in by the plant and when the insect chews on your plant, it's actually chewing onto the, onto the insecticide. Okay, so it kills the insects while it's chewing on your plant. Okay, so basically systemic means it goes into the plant and it works on the plant over time. Whereas your contact insecticide, something like this, you have to hit the insect on that application. So a proper coverage is needed when you're using a contact insecticide. Okay, under the leaf or right into the flower, um, you have to hit that insect if you want to kill it. All right? So that's the two differences between systemic and a contact insecticide. With orthene, if you are going to use orthene, you have to reapply after 10 days. Okay? To make sure that you've gotten rid of your insect that you're trying to kill. Okay? You apply it first round and then after 10 days, you reapply. Just to make sure that you've gotten rid of whatever you're trying to get rid of. All right? Does so yeah. it kill all, all insects? It will kill plant? most insects, yes. Yes. Oh. So, yeah, um, you have to be very careful. People who have bees around, you have to be very careful when you're using things like this. Huh? That's why we try not to use these things. Only if you notice that you have a large, like a big problem, then you resort to insecticides, things like that. Also, another point to mention, if you do have bees around, and they are around your flowers. Bees and flowers for show don't mix well. All right? So we have the shade cloth there, the shade house there, to basically keep bees out of our nursery. All right? Why is that? The reason for this is because we want our flowers blooming as long as possible. Okay? But what bees do is they pollinate the flower 
and so the flower wants to close and start making seeds. Okay, so something that should have been there for three weeks, if a bee gets into the flower on the first day, the next few days it closes out. All right, so if you are in the flower business, you can't really be in the bee business, <laughs> all right? <laughs> or you keep them separated, okay? You have a shade, shade, shade house and so that the bees cannot get into the flowers. Um, okay, so that was the Dendrobium borer. Uh, another insect that we have is uh, the thrips. Thrips is another damaging insect. Tiny, you can hardly see it, and they fly from plant to plant, okay? Very tiny, they are like pale yellow, light brown. And what they do is they, they will cause the buds to drop off early and deform your flowers. Okay, and if in really bad cases, if there are no flowers, they might chew on your younger leaves. Okay, so thrips is another bad insect. And with thrips, you actually have a lot of uh, products out there that mention on the back that they uh, will hit thrips. Okay, so diazinon is one of them. You'll have see here that it attacks thrips and also malathine. Okay, so diazinon, malathine are contact insecticides that you could use for thrips. All right. Now another important tip to know when you are using insecticides or fungus, uh, fungicides, you have to alternate your insecticides and fungicides. Just like anything else, any other pests, any other virus, they build up a resistance to these uh, insecticides and fungicides. Okay, so if you kept using diazinon every week, of course that insect is going to build up a resistance. The next generation will be able to take on the diazinon and it's going to be not effective in the next few months, years. All right, so you have to alternate from one insecticide to another. Okay, so what we do here, if we identify that we have something, we're going to spray it with diazinon on the Monday, and then maybe the next Monday, we're going to spray it with malathine. And then maybe the Monday after that, we're going to use multi-guard, something different. Okay, so you keep trying to change so that the insect doesn't get used to it. All right? Another insect that you might have is a red spider mite. Okay, usually you'll have silver tinge on the back of the leaf. And if you look closely, you'll have red little, uh, little red dots. Okay, these can be quite bad in large numbers. Now these ones here, it's a bit different. They're mites. So you have to look for a miticide. Okay, it's not an insecticide. You have to look for a miticide. Okay, no insecticide will kill a mite. All right, so if you have the red spider mite, if you do identify a red spider mite, you have to go out and look for a miticide. Sometimes they have insecticide slash miticide. You can use that. But as long as on the label it says that it's a miticide, then it, it will kill the red spider mite. Snails. Okay, snails very bad. Uh, during the wet season, you know, we're lucky sort of in the west. We don't have that many snails. But during our summer months, um, you do get a lot of snails. And uh, we'll usually use blitzen. Okay. Now, we won't apply this in the pot plant, okay? The, you can just, if on your benches, we have our concrete benches outside, so what we do is just put them on the concrete, uh, on the concrete tops. Or even if you have benches, you put a uh, cardboard box on top, they will be attracted to it and come and eat it, okay? So you keep them, keep the bait away from your plants. Coming up next, orchid fungicides. It's not always sunburn, a lot of the times it's fungal, fungal problems, these black spots on the leaves. Okay, I can move on to fungicides, huh? Now, fungus, we're very lucky in the West that we don't have that many fungal problems, okay, because we're so dry. Um, but when we do have our summer months, a lot of the times when it's late at night, uh, we do get some fungal disease. And uh, like I told you before, it's not always sunburn. 
A lot of the times it's fungal, fungal problems, these black spots on the leaves. Okay, so identifying it early is the best um, and knowing what to spray on it. Okay, so usually here at South Sea Orchids we will use, there's three fungicides that we usually use. Okay, Sunder Mill is one. Sunder Mill comes in the silver packet. Uh, usually get it from hardware stores. Another one is Mancozeb. Mancozeb is another fungicide. And uh, your household bleach, okay? Like Janola. You can use Janola as, Janola is a very good um, fungicide. All right, so all, all of the directions are usually on the back of the label to tell you how, you just follow the ornamentals and the ratio there. But early detection of certain, certain fungicide, uh, fungus, um, that's the best, okay? Not, as soon as you notice it, it, you will still have that scarring there, those black spots, that yellowing, that's not going to go away, but it just means that your new leaves, uh, the leaf growth that comes out, you, you prevent the spores from infecting the rest of the plant. All right? So that's, that's all your fungus side will do. Okay, now with, when you're using Janola, if you are going to use Janola, a couple of tips to remember. When you're using Janola, you cannot use it during the middle of the day when it's sunny. Okay, the sunlight dissipates the active ingredient there that works on the fungus. Okay, so it's best to use Janola late in the evening. Okay, as the sun just goes down, you can use it and the Janola will work on your plant over that time. All right. Um, you will also use a ratio of about one, uh, one tablespoon to four liters for the Janola. I told you I'd talk a little bit about the mealybug because that is really the only scale insect that attacks your gasmanias. All right? Not very often they'll come to your orchids, um, but you do notice these a lot of the time on the palm leaves. A lot of you will notice, and then you'll have the black ants as well. The, these almost go hand in hand. The, the mealy bug, the white furry bug on the palm leaves, and the black ants. Okay, if you want to get rid of both of those, you try and get rid of the mealy bug. Okay, because basically the ants farm the mealy bug. They want that sooty mold that they produce. So to get rid of the ants, you get rid of the mealy bug. One way you can do that is use white oil. Okay, white oil is, you can get rid of the mealy bug. Um, Yates white oil is quite expensive, so the alternative to the white oil is that you can use uh, soapy water. Okay, just that bar of soap that you have, just lather that up and use that water in a sprayer and spray um, your, your plants or spray the insects. Alright, and how, how that works is basically that scale insect, they're feeding on the leaf um, and then they come up to breathe and then they go back down to feed and they keep doing that. So this sort of, the soapy water creates a film over them and so it suffocates the insect while it's trying to breathe. Okay, so you, that's a way to get rid of the mealybug and then you'll eventually get rid of your black ants. Also part of the forum was a tour of the SSO gardens outside. So with a lot of the orchids that you've been looking at, most of them don't have any scent. If you notice, you go up and you, a lot of people go up to the orchids and they smell them but there's really no scent. Um, so the less that they've been hybridized, the more scent they'll have. So that one there, that one is uh, Dendrobium, yeah, it's called Superbum, and not much has been done to it, so it has quite a nice smell on the flower. A lot of the Cattleyas that we have, um, there's a lot of scent to Cattleyas, uh, a lot of them smelling like citrus, or even some got chocolate, uh, chocolate smell, so yeah. But most orchids don't have a scent. On our next episode, Levi gives us a hands-on training experience during part three of the Orchid Growers Forum. Because yes, fingernail has got disease too. Eh? You can spread disease from one plant to another. We speak to the chair of the FSA. A huge expansion of uh, orchid growers this, this year. And it's been fascinating because people have come to the workshops who've lost their jobs. And an old friend ends our series with a sweet serenade. Oh,